Very little is known about the size of the universe. It may be trillions of light years across, or even infinite in size. The observable universe is certainly finite. The distance to the edge of the visible universe is about 46.5 billion light years in all directions from the Earth. Thus, the visible universe may be thought of as a perfect sphere with the Earth at its center and a diameter of about 93 billion light years. So what does the universe look like? With so much cosmological stuff out there, one must wonder, how did we get here? I grew up uh, in a Pentecostal family in Mexico, and so I was born into a uh, Pentecostal fundamentalist Protestant family. Uh, by the time I was seven or eight, I was a child uh, evangelist. I would go around uh, preaching, uh, trying to convert uh, people to to Christ, and that lasted un, uh, until my late teens, uh, first year of college or so. Uh, when I was um, in uh, high school, I <clears throat> decided I really wanted to be a missionary and convert atheists and Muslims and so forth. And I realized that the best way to do that was to learn their arguments. So I proceeded to educate myself. I started to read all of the major uh, Christian apologetics works as well to, to learn how to defend Christianity. Either. So I read you know, Josh McDowell, Gleason Archer, Norm Geisler, all of those people, folks. And the more I read them, and the more I compared the arguments from other religions and non-religions, uh, I realized that my arguments really were no better than those of other religions or even uh, secular atheists. So eventually I came to realize uh, I don't think um, Christianity has the best evidence, doesn't have any evidence as far as I'm concerned for certain things. And eventually that led to the realization I don't believe in any sort of supernatural uh, being. Well, uh, the more I started to read, I re came to realize there is a difference between knowing and believing. Uh, most, most people, anywhere in the world, doesn't just have to be Christians, uh, basically grow up or into adulthood in the same religion they were born into. So uh, chances are an adult Muslim probably was raised a Muslim, an adult Hindu was probably raised a Hindu, uh, adult Christians probably raised a Christian. So the variable seems to me where you were raised. Uh, and so I realized, boy, if I had been raised in a Hindu home, I'd be telling you what Hindus say. Uh, there has to be a better way to know what the truth is. It can't just be relying on what they tell you. You have to gain the ability to verify information for yourself. So the biggest realization came to me when I said, I'm not going to believe in anything for which there is no evidence. Since the world, uh, the world that I see around me is all that I know exists, I don't live for a world I don't know exists. To me, that's a waste. I say, I'm gonna live for a world and make the world I live in better because that's where I live. Uh, so to me, all my energy goes into making the world around me better rather than living for a world I don't know exists in the first place. So uh, I always tell my wife, if you find someone that loves you as much as you love them, that's as good as it gets in the world. Uh, and anything left uh, after that, if you can help as many people make the world in which you live better, everybody wants clean air, for example. Everybody wants to live in a world where they're not killed at random. Well, you work for the common good. Now, what is it that it's in the best interest of everybody? Not, not, not everybody's going to agree on what's the common interest, but that's the be best you can do in this world. I haven't still found anything that I could say, well, that would bring me back uh, to Christianity. 
it, it's just uh, there's just no evidence that I could really say that's really convincing. Right.